Hello and welcome to the Peace Security Channel once again. In this video I'll be showing you how to configure or how I like to configure Komodo Internet Security version 7. So if you haven't seen the review I'd recommend watching it right now. I'll link it down in the description box below. And uh, so now I'll just show you how I like to keep uh, my CIS. So first of all, the home screen, I remove the live PC support because I don't really use it. And I put in advanced settings instead because, you know, that's one of the things I do very often. I don't really use virtual desktop that much. And uh, the rest of tabs are like the same. So first of all, I hope you guys know that um, this user interface is very much customizable. You can just remove anything like this. And if you want, you can just add anything like this. So that's one thing you can do. And you can also switch the home page view fairly easily. And you can immediately change your antivirus to on access stateful or disabled. Similarly, auto sandbox, your intrusion prevention or firewall. So now I'll go into a bit of detail about the settings. Um, Komodo does allow you to use several themes in their new version, so I'll just show you all of them real quick. Here's one. So restart it to change it. Yeah, there you go. This is the classic team. And uh, this makes it look very much like Windows 8. More like a Windows 8 app. There you go. All square. Blue lights. It's kind of neat, but to be honest, I would mostly prefer the um, regular one. That is the tile team, which is a nice little compromise between looking more like Windows 8 and also looking more like Komodo. So I like the tile team. I think it's really neat. So they've added an option to import Fire's databases, which is quite nice. So if you had like the previous version or something like that, or you're installing or you're reinstalling the product, you can just save your Fire's database and you can import it. it. Saves you a lot of time in case you have a slow internet connection. So now let's get to the real deal. So here I like to turn off show messages by. Uh, Komodo Message Center because I don't really want to read all that, you know, advertisement, it's crap and all that. But uh, no big deal if you turn it on, it's not really, it doesn't give you that many pop ups. So these are basically your appearance settings, not much to see here. In updates, um, I check for virus updates like every two hours because I don't want to miss out on anything. And uh, you automatically download program updates. I recommend you keep it this way. You can keep this at the default that is six hours. Doesn't really make that much of a difference because that's usually the time duration by which they release new patches. So it doesn't mean that just because you set it to an hour or two hours that it's going to um, really update every two hours because they may not have any patches. But just to be sure, I make it two because I don't want to miss out on any kind of signatures. And um, I don't use these because I don't really think they're necessary. I mean, updates don't really take up that much resources or don't waste that much battery if you use it. <laughs> Logging, once again, I leave everything at default, not much to do there. Configurations, they have some nice preset configurations, proactive security in case you're like, you know, you're using an infected computer, you want to turn this on, but to be honest, I wouldn't recommend using Komodo to clean your computer. It does much better as a prevention utility rather than a removal utility. Internet security is the way to go for most people. Now, in antivirus, uh, of course, we have real-time scan and scanning optimizations enabled. 
Now I do not quarantine threats and the reason for that is um, Komodo does give a few false positives and I don't like my files disappearing. Let's just say you um, got a few files and one of them happens to be a false positive that's caught by Komodo and it gets removed while you're not on your computer or you're just not looking at the screen and when you come back boo your file has disappeared and you have no idea what happened so by the time you figure out that Komodo quarantined it you're probably so angry you won't just um, you know just get rid of Komodo so for that reason I don't automatically remove threats because Komodo does tend to come up with a few false positives and I recommend this for most users unless you're too lazy to just uh, see what's uh, happening because in most cases if you have a virus infection it's better you know about it so I just turn this off and I select the action clean manually but of course if you're having people who don't really know that much about security you might as well turn this on and of course you should decompress and scan archive files of jar and exe extension and again once again if you have like people who are not that much of um, you know security you know they're novice in terms of uh, PC security you can just turn this on and after this many seconds the alerts will just time out so that's uh, that's a neat option now heuristic scanning I've experimented a lot on this thing and from what I found there is a huge difference both in the number of uh, positive detections and the number of false positive detections if you turn this up to medium so on low it does give a few heuristics but not that much if you bump it up to medium you'll get a much better detection ratio but at the same time you'll get more false positives and there's really not that much of a difference between medium and high that, at least that's the way I found out but um, for most purposes I would recommend keeping it at low but if you're really that kind of a guy who doesn't mind much about false positives and uh, you don't care to just um, ignore a few and you want a better detection rate I would rec recommend going up to medium but for most people I guess low is the way to go now scans I don't use a full scan and never schedule a full scan because I always have an external hard drive hooked up and I don't want that to be scanned it takes a long long time to scan so I just set up a quick scan and I schedule it like um, okay I schedule it to scan commonly infected areas that's the way it's set up by default and uh, yeah I use medium heuristics in this scan and uh, nice thing is Komodo have come up with the disinfection feature so if possible it can disinfect some threats so by default I just leave it at disinfect threats and uh, I run the scan with background priority so that uh, you know my present um, you know the thing I'm working on isn't affected that much and I always detect uh, PUPs and the schedule I run it like every week on Sunday yep that's the way I schedule a quick scan it's not really that necessary but you know it's always good to keep your PC scan you know because if you're like me especially because I turn off the antivirus most of the time because I have download so many malware packs and all that for most users it wouldn't be necessary so for defense plus um, this probably where most of you are interested so first I'll go to the intrusion prevention system and this disable by default but what I do is I turn it on and I set it to clean PC mode I know it gives a few alerts in safe mode which is why it's probably turned off by default paranoid mode is just um, a nightmare for a novice user so I recommend staying away from that unless you have an infected computer once again I do not recommend cleaning your computer with this I mean this is not a great cleaning utility to be honest I've tried it and uh, doesn't do that good of a job rather you know it creates a mess so most uh, the best thing to do would be you know either you turn it on to training mode if you have a lot of you know unknown applications on your system and you run it for like a week and then you switch to um, safe mode or in my case I just run it in clean PC mode 
which means it basically doesn't give you anything for uh, your current configuration. And uh, this works really well. Of course, if you have a clean PC, in um, most cases this is fine because I would recommend just scanning with Malwarebytes or Hitman Pro to verify that your computer is clean. Then just turn this on, and um, you know that's probably you know, the best way to use the intrusion prevention system. And uh, I do see the pop-up alerts, and I do set it to Furbus mode. What this does is this gives you much more detailed alerts and helps you decide more about what you should do. For most novice users, this would be probably annoying, but you know because I'm quite advanced, I like it. So I set it this way most of the time. And if you want your application, safe applications, to you know follow a rule, you can do it over here. Just set this up, and that'll be nice. Um, that'll be nice. So if you really um, don't want frequent pop-ups for safe applications, you can do this. Lots of ways to use this thing. I mean, that's what I like about Komodo. They give you a lot of customizability. Now, advanced. Uh, I do enable adaptive mode under low system resources. It's not that big of a deal, but yeah, I just set it that way. Now the basic rules, I don't change them. You know, there are a lot of things over here and you can do a lot of customization, but I just leave it the way that it comes from the factory. I don't mess with these things either. You can see your um, key places are protected. And in behavior blocker, now here a lot of people recommend turning this up to restricted, but as you saw in the test, partial limited does a pretty good job. Plus, it uh, even if it falsely sandboxes a good file or a legit file, it doesn't really affect it that much. Yeah, I mean, you can run an application in this. But if you turn it, turn it up to restricted or untrusted, a legit application would most likely fail. So for most purposes, I recommend running it at partial limited. Some people run it at like fully virtualized, but um, you know that doesn't really work that well with legit applications. Once again, so to have a good balance of security and um, you know less alerts, more legit programs to run properly, I like to set it up at partial limited. You can set it up to restricted, but for most people, I would recommend this setting. And this is the way it comes from default. So, most uh, Komodo also shared the same thought. So you can detect programs which require elevated privileges. This is very much necessary if you're using a lot of installers. So keep this turned on. So yeah, basically everything's at stock. I just enable Fireskope. Uh, it's a new feature. It, I haven't seen too many alerts from it yet, but well, I, I like it and I uh, like to keep it turned on, but I also like to see the alerts. If you're not an advanced user, you should probably turn this off. Sandbox, once again, everything at default. There's nothing really to see here. Firewall, a lot of people, um, you know, try like to turn it off or something. For most purposes, I would uh, recommend turning this off because this just basically allows all requests uh, where your input is necessary. So I like to turn this off and if you get too many alerts, here's a suggestion. Once again, go to training mode for about seven days and then go back to safe mode. That'll save you a lot of trouble. And um, you have automatic detection of private networks, blah, blah, blah. this is all fine application rules. You can modify this if you're really into that kind of thing. Most people wouldn't like to mess with this because you know it's kind of like an advanced thing. Once again global rules you can set these up too. You've got some nice rule sets here so if you're not really interested in setting everything yourself we, they have some like default rules like you can set anything to be treat it as a web browser, email client, and so on. And uh, finally, website filtering, by default, they have this set up nicely. If you go to like blocked sites, shows you that malware and phishing sites are blocked. However, I haven't seen much of these things in action. 
So it's not really working that well at this time, but I just keep it on anyway because it doesn't really matter. File rating, once again, um, I use the cloud lookup and everything, and it's basically all set to stock, nothing much to see here. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know most of you probably thought, well, I knew all this, what's your point? Well, this wasn't really meant for you. Uh, most This video was mostly meant for people who are new to Komodo and uh, just want to see how I set it up. So hope you guys enjoyed that. I will be making some more videos, so stay tuned. Have a nice day. And um, yeah, don't hesitate to use Komodo even if you're a beginner. It's a really nice product and it's really not as, uh, you know, problematic as some people describe it to be. Some people say, oh my god, Komodo, it's meant for, you know, really advanced users. You can't just, not everyone can use it. It's not really like that. Almost anyone can use it. And if you're really that annoyed, you can just turn off the sandbox. That would save you from a lot of trouble. But for most users, this is the way it would work the best. So at least that's what I think. Uh, share your thoughts. How do you like to configure Komodo? I'd like to see your opinion and also which team you like and blah, blah, blah. It's always nice to hear from more people. So drop a comment down in the section below. And have a nice day. And thanks for watching.